Hi guys, it's me Chazzer HD and welcome to another episode of the podcast where today we are reviewing the events of the Sao Paulo Grand Prix. What a Grand Prix it was. Very wet Grand Prix, uh, wet qualifying as well. It was uh, a great race weekend to really see just at the moment in terms of the drivers who really uh, is able to handle those difficult conditions and who is not. And we sure did find that out on Sunday after a absolutely incredible drive by Max Verstappen to win the Sao Paulo Grand Prix, his first win since the end of June in Spain, winning by almost a pit stops gap over Esteban Ocon, who finished in second, and Max winning from 17th on the grid. One of his best drives of his entire career, there is no doubt about that. But yeah, Verstappen taking the win in Brazil, Ocon second, Gasly third, George Russell fourth, <clears throat> Charles Leclerc fifth, Lando Norris in sixth, seventh, uh, Yuki Tsunoda, eighth, Oscar Piastri, ninth, Liam Lawson, and tenth, Lewis Hamilton. And after this Grand Prix, the championship is pretty much over, not officially. It uh, will be wrapped up most likely either in Vegas or Qatar. I'd be very surprised if it went down to the final race. But uh, yeah, this race pretty much ended Lando Norris's hopes of winning his first world championship. We'll get on to the race that Norris had. Uh, we're going to start with the top teams first. Just to let you know, I will do a bit on Alpine and uh, probably Racing Bulls as well to a degree. Um, in this review because obviously they both had such great races so uh, what we're going to do is we'll go on to them later and we'll start with the top teams and we'll start with obviously the race winners Red Bull Racing. Uh, it's a, been a long time since they won a Grand Prix, way too long for a team like Red Bull. Their longest wind drought, I think, in about four years. Um, just incredible how they've gone so long without victory. But it's all down, really, to Max Verstappen. Started 17th, got his way up to, I think it was 10th place by lap 2 or lap 3. He was instantly, you could tell, had really good pace in the wet, which is not really a surprise because Max Verstappen is Max Verstappen. We've seen, you know, uh, continuously over the years that he is one of the best wet weather drivers that we have in Formula One. Um, and yeah, he, in clear air, proved that he had the best pace of anyone through the Grand Prix. Did get held up a couple times, um, especially when he was behind Sonoda, Ocon and Leclerc which uh, did hurt his Grand Prix a bit. But once the two leaders, Russell and Norris, made their pit stops, Max stayed out on track and was able very well to withstand the very heavy rain conditions, which would have been extremely hard given he was on intermediate tyres. So he did really well to keep it on the island, as we say, and to uh, just keep going. Until we got the safety car and then the red flag. Now, was Max lucky with the safety car and the red flag? Yeah, he was. But he made his own luck. As we'll get on to later with Lando Norris, uh, he was uh, someone who uh, said after the race that, uh, you know, that Max was lucky. We'll get on to his comments and his race uh, in a bit. But, yeah... You know, was there luck involved? Of course there was. But Max Verstappen had to make his own luck. He had to put himself in position to capitalise from that situation, which was not easy whatsoever. You know, having to keep it on track with tyres that were not suitable for the track, but also, you know, coming from where he started on the grid up to where he was, nobody expected that. Absolutely no one expected that. So, yeah, a bit of luck, but you can't, you, you know, you can't base Max Verstappen's race win on luck. You just can't. It was down to Max Verstappen being the best driver in the world. Period. End of story. 
when the race got going again, didn't have the best restart. Um, Esteban Ocon sprinted off into the distance, which I think to a degree might have been Max having, you know, to deal with a bit of spray ahead of obviously Ocon's car, which, uh, you know, wouldn't have been great. But as the track got in better condition, Max started to catch Ocon. Then we had another safety car because Carlos Sainz crashed. And then on the final restart of the race, Max Verstappen, brilliant move, up the inside of Ocon into turn one and took the lead and never looked back and won the race by about 19, it was 19 or 20 seconds, something like that. Repeatedly set the fastest lap, only proving that he was the fastest on race day. So yeah, congratulations to Max Verstappen. He is... The deserving world champion of 2024, no doubt about it. Nobody, I don't think, has come close to not just... It's not the quality of the performances, it's the consistency, which is what separates him. I mean, you know, we've seen quite a few times this season, Charles Leclerc, for example, put in some really top performances, especially in the second half of, the, you know, of this season. But the difference is... Leclerc can't do that at the minute, by the looks of it, on a consistent basis. Max can. That's what we've seen in the last, you know, three, four, five years now. That Max is able every race weekend to turn up and get the absolute best result he can, no matter how quick or how slow the car is. That's why he is the best driver on the grid, and that's why he is going to be a very deserving Four-time world champion. So congratulations to Max getting his first race win in, I think, 11 races it was for him. Um, a word on Sergio Perez quickly. Terrible performance by him. Never really looked likely to finish in the points. Was busy battling uh, Oliver Behrman. Hamilton also had a bit of a poor race. Uh, Liam Lawson as well. Yeah, Perez was just absolutely terrible and surely can't keep that seat for much longer but you know Red Bull despite winning the race they're not going to win the Constructors Championship because of Sergio Perez and they are just too far behind in the championship given that we've got now only three races left in the season but at least they're going to come away with a championship because it did look a few times this season like Red Bull you know, were in proper trouble and Max Verstappen was in proper trouble. But still, somehow, Max Verstappen has got the job done and, like I said, will win the championship either in Vegas or Qatar. In Vegas, all he has to do is outscore... Uh, or not outscore, sorry. All he has to do is finish ahead of Lando Norris in the last Vegas Grand Prix. Or, if Lando Norris does not outscore Max by any more than two points, then, you know, Verstappen is champion. Most likely, if Red Bull don't have a great Las Vegas Grand Prix, the, the championship will get wrapped up in Qatar. But, yeah, again, thoroughly deserving to be four times world champion. Let's go on, though to McLaren and Lando Norris and Oscar Piastri because I'll be honest I've got a lot more to say about not the team but really the two drivers now we'll start quickly with Oscar Piastri because I've got a lot more to say of course about Lando Norris which is no surprise I think to you guys Oscar Piastri just not good enough I'm afraid he started the weekend brilliantly you know pole position for the sprint should have really won the sprint, but, you know, had to do the, you know, uh, what he did, letting Norris through for the championship, which, you know, was all fair. He, you know, did his job. But from that final lapping qualifying on Sunday morning, from then on, he was very poor. Very, very poor. Uh, the mistake he made at the end of qualifying was just a really poor mistake. It was one that, as I said at the time... He really should have been, you know, um, expecting something like that, you know, uh, given that other drivers had gone deep at turn one. But, yeah, went straight on. Thankfully, didn't hit the barriers. Ended up qualifying in eighth place. Way too low on the grid. And then in the race, he never really made any progress all uh, afternoon. Uh, eventually, he did get past Liam Lawson and Yuki Tsunoda, but... 
that's not exactly an accomplishment. McLaren should have been finishing miles ahead of Al uh, not AlphaTauri, of Racing Bulls, yet they weren't that far ahead. And Piastri, once he got his deserved 10-second penalty for punting Liam Lawson off the track, ended up behind Sonoda and finishing in 8th place. So yeah, shocking performance from Piastri. And Piastri does need to... You know, for next year, if he's going to be a championship contender, which is possible, you know, given some of the highlights we've seen from him this year, a championship challenge is possible from Piastri. But th the thing that's costing him is he just isn't consistent enough. That's what is separating him from being, you know, on the level of Verstappen, Leclerc, uh, you know, drivers like that who are a lot more consistent with their greatness. Piastri, if you look really since that win he had in Baku, he hasn't really been that great. Singapore was way too far off the pace. US Grand Prix, he was too far off the pace. He did end up fifth and not miles behind his teammates, so the race at Kota was tolerable. Mexico had good pace. Messed up his qualifying and then didn't really have that great of a race. And then here in Brazil, weekend started well. But then after that mistake at the end of qualifying, it was just a terrible, terrible weekend in the end for Piastri. So if he's going to be a championship contender next year, like I said, he has to make sure he improves his consistency because... If this type of consistency from him continues, he won't be a championship contender. Not at all. Um, let's go on to, though, Lando Norris, who was easily, for me, one of the worst performers in the race. Started from pole, immediately got a start line infringement uh, warning. And was investigated after the race for that. Surprisingly didn't get a penalty. But I will admit I did not read the reasoning behind them not giving a penalty. So I'm not going to comment any further on that. But, you know, almost bottled the race before it began. And then when the race did begin, finally, he did throw it away. By getting just, again, a really poor start. Uh, in the second phase of the start, way too much wheel spin. And George Russell... Went for gold and went down the inside and took the lead of the Sao Paulo Grand Prix. And then after that, until the uh, only round of pit stops, Lando could not get close enough to have a go at George Russell, which was really surprising because the McLaren should have been quicker than the Mercedes um, in, in those conditions. And I do think in clear air, the McLaren was quicker. Lando just wasn't driving well enough to actually get close enough, I think, to to go for an overtake. We've seen so many times this year, Lando, uh, his lack of ability in being able to overtake slower cars. And once again, it happened with George Russell. Eventually, he did pass him right after the pit stops when the rain really started to come down. But it was too little too late because if Lando had passed Russell early on in the first five laps or so to retake the lead, Lando could have built a bigger gap to Ocon and Verstappen who ended up staying out and being ahead of them when the safety car came out and may have prevented them from benefiting from that situation. So yeah, Verstappen was lucky to a degree, but Lando Norris could have done a lot more to prevent that situation uh, situation from happening, undoubtedly, in my view. Um, but he didn't. Uh, again, he, when he passed Russell, it was too little too late when the safety car came out and then the red flag came out. Still, though, even though, you know, he was two positions behind Max, he still had a chance. You know, there was still... We still had just over halfway of the race remaining. There was still, what was it, like 37, 38 laps to go. So there was still plenty of time for Lando Norris to win the race. And if you look at the restart of the race, Esteban Ocon was pulling away from Verstappen for a few laps. So it's not like Max instantly got into the lead and ran away. There was still a chance for Lando to reclaim maybe the, you know, the win of the race. But what did he do? Have a poor restart and George Russell overtook him for fourth 
place. So immediately puts himself on the back foot and then immediately dropped a few seconds behind Russell and ended up, by the time the safety car came out again, he was already 10 seconds behind Verstappen. And then on the final restart was so poor. Uh, Leclerc, you know, went for an ambitious move down the inside. The gap was there and he got the move done. Brilliant move done by Leclerc. Lando, though, was... I, I, I don't even know, you know, what he was doing really. But clearly he was flustered by that move and just decided to go straight on and didn't bother taking the corner and ended up losing two positions uh, to Leclerc and his teammate. Obviously, his teammate lay him back through, but then he finished in sixth place and he never really uh, challenged Leclerc for fifth place. Shockingly bad performance from Lando Norris. And that performance sums up Lando Norris in 2024. And I have to say, I'm going to make a video on this, of course, which hopefully will come out not too far after the season is finished. So you guys can you know, share your thoughts. But... Lando Norris, for me, has, the championship bid of his has been one of the worst we have seen in a long time. Continuously has had a faster car than Max and been in better positions than Max, yet somehow ends up not scoring anywhere near enough points or somehow gets beaten by Max. How many times have we seen it this year? You know, the guy has been on pole position, what, four or five times in the last, like, six or seven races? Yet he's only won one of the last, I think, five or six races. How many times does this guy want to bottle race wins? How many times does this guy want to not live up to his potential? Because he absolutely didn't do that in Brazil. And then has the, the, the goal, the temerity after the race, to come out and say that the reason he lost the race was not talent, it was luck. Go fuck yourself. How about that? I, you know, I don't hate Lando Norris, but I do hate bad losers. And Lando, absolutely, after that race, was a bad loser. Making really bad excuses for why he did not win that race. You cannot tell me for a second Lando Norris got the best result he possibly could have got. Absolutely no chance. And again, it sums up his 2024. You know, so many times failing to overtake cars either quick enough or just in general that are clearly slower than his car. Or, you know, get how many times has he lost the lead on the first lap from pole position. It's like seven or eight times now. How many times has he made, you know, really silly errors going off track and losing a position here and there? It just keeps happening. He just isn't... I saw someone say it on Twitter, and it. I think at this point it is so true, that in qualifying, Lando is an elite driver, but in the race, Lando is more of a midfield-level driver. He just doesn't have what it takes to be, you know, to fight with the most elite drivers on the grid. He just doesn't. He's not a truly elite driver. He's not. And, you know, I I always thought that he wasn't quite on the level of a Max Verstappen, even though he has really impressive pace at times. But I think this season has absolutely confirmed that he is nowhere near as good as as Max Verstappen. And I'd say it's similar. You know, the comparison between Verstappen and Norris at this point is similar to back in the day, 30 years ago, between Michael Schumacher and Damon Hill. Very similar situation where in 1995, for example, and I, I talked about this on my stream a couple of days ago, Damon Hill in that 95 season was in a much faster car, yet lost the championship to Michael, who was in a slower car, Michael ended up winning the championship, I think, what was it, two or three races before the end of the season. And Michael that season was miles better than Damon and proved that he was at least a full level above Lando. Uh, not Lando, sorry, Damon. And 
In this case, Max is a full level above Lando. No doubt about that. You cannot, you know, if you're a Lando Norris fan, if you're a Lando Norris yourself, you cannot blame the car. You have had the fastest car this season. I know he likes to claim he hasn't, but he has. Ever since... Maybe not Miami, but definitely since the Spanish Grand Prix, McLaren have had the best car on the grid. Maybe, yeah, a couple races, you could say Ferrari were quicker, say Baku, um, US Grand Prix a couple weeks ago, you could say, obviously Mexico. But most of this season, I would say McLaren have had the best car. Yet Lando Norris only has three race wins. Guess who also has three race wins this year? Charles Leclerc. Even though Leclerc is in a has been in a clearly slower car this year, he has the same amount of wins. What does that tell you? It tells you that Leclerc is also a clear level above Lando Norris, and he is. Leclerc has been miles better than Norris this season. It's not even close for me. So, yeah, Lando, championship over. Who cares what he does in the final three races? Uh, it's irrelevant because the pressure will be off. And it, yeah, it, it matters about how you perform when the pressure's on. And when the pressure's on, Lando Norris does not step up to the plate, I'm afraid. Um, so, yeah, just just so poor. I, I am very disappointed in Lando, even though I, you know, I thought Max would win the championship. All along, really. I, I'm still disappointed with Lando. Not to, you know, not even... Not even being able to drag the championship battle down to the final race. In a car that definitely was capable of it. But again, lack of consistency. Lack of ability. Lack of mental strength. Lack of confidence. Whatever you want to call it. Just didn't deliver. And certainly if you look at the 21st century, which is like, what, the last 24 years, this has to be one of the worst championship challenges I've ever seen from Lando Norris. The the I, the only... I'm trying to think of a, a championship bid from someone else that was as bad as this. But it's hard, honestly. Because a lot of those other drivers in the past years, you know, 10 years ago, 20 years ago, at least most of the time got the best out of their car. But Lando, I I don't think has really, um, you know, most of the time. Um, yeah, the only one I could think of probably the most recent is probably, yeah, Damon Hill in 1995, which was what, 30 years ago, but... Without doubt for me, Lando Norris, one of the worst championship contenders we have seen. And I'll save a lot of my criticisms in terms of the season for when I do that Lando Norris video. But this season is going to affect Lando mentally going forward. No doubt about it. And all I'll say is this, unless Lando Norris has a clearly dominant car where it's miles quicker than everybody else and he has a teammate who he's better than, Lando Norris I don't think ever wins a world championship because as long as his rivals for the championship are Max Verstappen, Charles Leclerc, even George Russell, I would fancy Russell in in that fight. I mean, look at the F2 season back in 2018. Lando only won one race that year. Russell dominated the year. So, yeah, Lando. Just not championship material, I'm afraid. And uh, has well and truly been found out in 2024. Now, let's, uh, I'd say, quickly go through the other two top teams. Uh, Mercedes-Benz, George Russell finished in fourth, did the best he could. Yeah, you could say maybe he could have took the third place for the Alpine, but to be honest, the race that Russell pulled off, I think, was exceeding expectations. You know, leading the race for as long as he was. I think it was almost 30 laps that he led uh, the Grand Prix in a Mercedes car that's been pretty poor as of late, and as we saw in qualifying at times, was handling very poorly as well. 
but Russell somehow put it on the front row and, you know, held off Lando Norris really well for as long as he did. But then when the rain really started to come down, had less confidence in his car than Lando did, which is why he lost the position into turn four. And then, you know, on the restart of the race, he was able to get back past Norris, um, get back past Leclerc, who re uh, passed him at some point. And yeah, he put a challenge onto Pierre Gasly, but it just wasn't enough. The Alpines, I have to say, were I mean, they they were quick all weekend, Alpine, but in the wet, they really were pretty fast, which is uh, you know a, a great thing to see from them. But really, I would say Russell did the best he could, as he's now. I think uh, we'll see later when I show the championship standings, but I'm pretty sure that Russell is now ahead of Lewis Hamilton in the championship again, which he deserves to be because he's clearly been better than Hamilton this season. Um, but yeah, Russell, a good enough drive. Lewis Hamilton, obviously not a good enough drive, but a lot of that's down to the, the handling of his car, which is really, really bad. Finished in P10, had some good battles in the race at least, which I mean, maybe he enjoyed, I don't know. But yeah, um, Hamilton's Mercedes career really going out with a whimper, which is sad to see. And then Ferrari never really were that quick all weekend. Obviously in the dry, they were a lot quicker than they were in the wet. In the wet, they looked more midfield team-like than they did uh, front runners. Um, to be fair though, if you look at the other races this year where we've had rain, um, what was it, Silverstone, Canada, they've never really been quick in the wet this year. So, couldn't really do much about that. I think Leclerc did the absolute best he could really. Finishing in fifth place. Um, had some good battles in there. And yeah, got a decent amount of points for his uh, champion... Uh, not championship, for the you know for, for Ferrari at least. Even though their car was a bit slow. Carlos Sainz, really poor weekend. And proving why we don't rate Carlos Sainz here on this channel, you know, as highly as others do. Because yeah, he'll go and have a weekend like he did in Mexico... But then the week after, he'll do this. Crash in qualifying, crash in the race. And not be very quick at all. That's why, again, we don't rate Carlos Sainz as an elite level driver. Because he's not. Um, talking of Leclerc, though. Um, given Lando Norris is not that far ahead of him in the championship. I think it's like 30 points-ish. Leclerc, I still think, has a decent chance of uh, finishing second in the championship. Will it happen? I don't know. Probably not. Theoretically, it shouldn't happen because McLaren should have a quick enough car to see Lando finish second in the championship. But this is Lando Norris we're talking about. Um, and I do expect Ferrari to have the best car in three weeks' time in Las Vegas. So, yeah, I think Leclerc does have a decent chance of getting second in the championship. We'll see what happens with that. Now, let's go on to Alpine. What a race weekend where they had a quick car throughout. Even in the dry, they had one of the quickest midfield cars. Pierre Gasly in sprint qualifying ended up seventh on the grid, ended up seventh in the sprint race as well. So the pace of the Alpine was good all weekend, but in the wet, got even better and I think the reason that is is because obviously um in the wet you know power straight line speed doesn't matter as much and we know Alpine really struggle with that and it's a lot more focused maybe on the downforce of the cars which Alpine have improved a lot recently since their upgrade a couple of weeks ago in Austin they've been consistently fighting in the top 10 in qualifying and the races so Alpine took advantage of that. Esteban Ocon, brilliant drive. At one point, I was thinking after that restart from the red flag and when he was pulling away from Max, at one point I was thinking Esteban Ocon might actually do this. He might actually go on and win the race. In the end, it wasn't to be, but super drive from Ocon in what is almost his final race for Alpine. Obviously, he's been with this team since you know uh, the 2020 season, so... You know, it's going to be a bit of an emotional farewell for him, being with the team, you know, uh, four and a half years. Pierre Gasly also, really great drive that I don't think is getting enough credit because Gasly started the race from, was it 14th? 
That's Inkle, 13th on the grid. <clears throat> so he came all the way back from there, 10 places at least, to finish in third. Yeah, again, benefited a bit from the safety car and the red flag. But again, Alpine, they put themselves in that position to benefit from that, from such good pace and you know, such great uh, driving performance from Ocon and Gasly. And it was great to see post-race them two hugging. And being so happy with the double podium. Because a few years ago those two were not friends at all. Because of whatever happened when they were younger. But good to see that you know they've got over that. Uh, which is yeah it was really sweet to see. But yeah Alpine now sixth in the championship. Just like that. Haven't looked like they were going to be sixth in the championship at any point this year. But now they're sixth. And with Racing Bulls scoring a few points, there is only seven points separating three teams. Alpine in sixth, Haas in seventh, three points behind Alpine, and then four points behind uh, Haas at Racing Bulls. It's going to be a very exciting fight between those three teams for what is very important positions in the championship. And then for Racing Bulls, also need to shout their drivers out. Liam Lawson... Shouting it, uh, shout him out because his defensive performance against Piastri and Hamilton and Perez was really impressive. And I have to say, I'm really impressed by the racecraft of Liam Lawson that hopefully has impressed Red Bull as well. And for Yuki Tsunoda, obviously qualified third and for quite a while was holding his own in third. Then, right before the safety car came out and Tsunoda pitted for wet tyres, Tsunoda got overtaken by um, Ocon, then pitted, and that's really what cost him in the race because he dropped a few positions after that. Didn't have a great restart, but ended up, you know, eventually you know, getting on with it and having good pace, and then ended up finishing in seventh because of Piastri's penalty. So eight points on the board for... Um, was it eight points on the board? For Alpine, or not Alpine, for, for Racing Bulls. Yeah, I think it was. So, yeah, brilliant result for them. And again, puts them right in that fight for sixth in the championship. We'll see how it all shakes out. I still think Haas are the favourites to finish sixth in the championship because I think in the dry, they've got the best car. But who knows what's going to happen in these final three races in terms of, you know, DNFs, crashes. You, you have no idea uh, what could happen. So, you know, we will find out. But, yeah, fantastic Sao Paulo Grand Prix. Obviously, I'll flash up the championship standings and how they're affected now going into the Las Vegas Grand Prix. But thank you, guys, obviously, for coming along for the content this weekend for, uh, you know, Sao Paulo Grand Prix, despite, obviously, us not having a qualifying session on, um, on what do you call it, on Saturday uh, evening here in the UK. We, you know, were live for like three hours and ended up not getting anything. So, yeah, um, thanks to you guys for still sticking with me and, uh, you know, still being around. Uh, but, yeah, just to let you guys know the plan going forward. So there won't be any content on the channel now until the day before qualifying for the Las Vegas Grand Prix, which will be the 22nd of November. So almost... Um, what, almost 20 days until the next uh, bit of content on the channel. Sorry about that, but I've got uni work to focus on in these next couple of weeks. So, and obviously that's very important. I will be, though, working a bit on a couple videos that I hope to come out um, towards the end of the season or at the end of the season. So, I will do some work on some content as well. But yeah, in terms of my next, you know, the next thing coming on the channel... Again, Friday, November the 22nd at, I don't know, 8pm UK time, say. I'll be doing a qualifying preview for the Las Vegas Grand Prix. The reason I'm doing a qualifying preview is because I won't be doing a qualifying watch along because of the timing of the session. But I will be up uh, for the race on the Sunday morning and I will be doing a race watch along. Along with Niblo, who will rejoin us on commentary for the uh, Las Vegas Grand Prix and will be live at 4 a.m. UK time, two hours before lights out for that Las Vegas Grand Prix for the build-up and then watch along the race and then a bit of a reaction afterwards and then obviously the day after uh, a podcast reviewing 
that Grand Prix. And then, obviously, Las Vegas is the start of the final three races of the season. And the final three races of the season is a triple header. So, yeah, I won't be doing a qualifying watch along for Vegas, but I'll be doing a race watch along. But one thing I can announce is I will be doing a qualifying and race watch along for the final two races of the season in Qatar and Abu Dhabi. So, in terms of watch alongs, the only watch along I'll be missing is qualifying in Vegas. But for all the rest, the, you know, the races in Vegas, Qatar, Abu Dhabi and qualifying in Qatar and Abu Dhabi, they'll be covered live on the channel. So make sure to come along to all of that as we complete what's been a very exciting 2024 Formula 1 season. And guys, until my next podcast and my next piece of content previewing qualifying for the Las Vegas Grand Prix in just under three weeks from now, it has been me, Chazzer HD. Goodbye. <laughs>